that we are there. The idea of you know, funding Americans and independence and equality stuff is only really apply to American citizens, it's not apply to the world. That you cannot treat every world citizen as the way you treat American citizens. Therefore, it's um, uh, it will become obstacles that if you're trying to become more powerful and then you still want to be nice to everyone, this is not going to be possible. So, if you want to be stronger, then you have to be cruel to others. Star with this. Any other appearance? I mean, I've come in between, but I think it is the right thing to take the vote. I think if, if we did, then Japan or, or Germany would have. Uh, but I think it should have been like a better structured Iraq situation where we like, set up a government and try to get out. That kind of thing. Yeah, like. Uh, I, I felt like you, they, uh, I thought McKinley, like, they had, he had no other choice but to take it in, but like, I felt like it should be handled differently than how it was. Like, well, I thought they, they, they should like set up the Philippines for self determination. Like, they, they should have annexed the Philippines, but then they should have probably self determination in the future by sending the government there. I, 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 I agree with that. What were uh, some of the compelling arguments the Imperials put forth? How much do you believe them? Um, right there. Um, one of the major arguments that the Imperials had was that uh, it would turn out to make a profit and no longer would become the next Hong Kong, the next, next center of trade, and uh, other arguments supporting Imperialism was that it was the Americans' destiny to expand their borders to Pacific and beyond, and basically bringing their American civilization to the other nations. And the other argument was the was civilizing mission for America to educate the Filipinos and Christianize them. There's something wrong with that argument. Do you guys remember the, the Philippines has been Catholic for 400 years, you know, Spanish introduced Catholicism. But the Protestant missionaries felt that they were actually doing the service, which they pulled the water. Anything else? Get the money money pro, uh, money uh, motive. Remember the talk about Manila being the new Hong Kong. It's, it's seductive, but it didn't uh, quite turn out to be that way. It's an impressive array that you have on the side of imperialists. McKinley, Roosevelt, Wood, Henry Cabot Lodge and others. How about the anti-imperialist side? That's quite a quite a collection. Does it not? Anybody remember who were some of the prominent anti-imperialists? Um, anti-imperialists like where James Bryan. James Bryan. Yeah. Um, that's a uh, Andrew Carnegie. Samuel Andrews. Bolter. Zahar Reed. Zahar Reed. Zara Reed is a, uh, that's, a, that's an amazing turn of events. You know, he's a Republican Speaker of the House. And then if you look at some quotes from Zara Reed, he basically said, This whole thing makes me sick. And he got so upset that he resigned. left his position, right? He resigned as Speaker. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. But imagine having Carnegie and Gompers in the same camp. That's amazing. Um, uh, shall I infer that all of the rest of you guys are anti-imperialists? Who would? When would why, why would you have been an anti-imperialist? Because I think that to forcibly make a place like adhere to our rules and laws is without their consent is very critical. What about this business about the contrary to our tradition? You know, uh, the reference was to I felt, I felt like the Senate they governed in the Declaration. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like what George Washington had said back when he became president and everything about how foreign policy, we should kind of stay out of that and it's really like, truly needed. So I felt like that's going into the Philippines about them really wanting us there. It wasn't something I could fully really get behind and agree with even though it might have money prospers and other things like that. I just 
going there. And then not giving them full rights after being in there when we didn't really want to, when they didn't really want us there was even more insulting to them. Right, right. Okay. But like that's like the period of George Washington is when Americans still like cannot uh, fully develop themselves and it's the time that they still weak. And then but at this time is then when American power is getting stronger and then we can this over it below and then can go to other countries that the policy needs to be changed. Very good. Yeah, it's missing one that I think I'm gonna stop here with this. Do you remember the imagery that Bailey used in the book? He said that the, the, the anti-imperialists are pointing out that the imperialists are getting up the far eastern cauldron. Do you guys know what cauldron means? Don't you? What picture comes to mind when you think of a cauldron? The, the witch's brew. Yeah. And the anti-imperialists said, a few people thought this through. You know what you're getting into when the United States becomes a far eastern power. With all the intrigue over there, we're going to be caught up in that. Are we ready to do that? And they're also pointing out to put, put an army and a navy over in the Philippines to be really expensive. They really are willing to shoulder that. So there's some really compelling arguments on both sides. We'll see in the next um, oh, few years, certainly in the next 30 years, who had the last laugh in this one, the imperialist and the anti So stay tuned.